G'day guys, Benji here. As I'm sure most of you have seen by now, Zip has released their quarterly update with some super exciting news. I saw some people in the Facebook groups thinking this would cause a massive red day and feeling super uneasy about the company, but there's definitely a lot to be excited about here. And in this video, we'll be breaking down their latest announcement, my thoughts, and where to go from here. If you guys are interested in a more comprehensive review of Zip, I uploaded one last week, so feel free to go check that one out. And please note, this is just my opinion uh, and my thoughts on their latest announcement. It's only intended for entertainment purposes. And as always, guys, I've broken down the video below into timestamps, so feel free to skip ahead at any time. And a quick disclaimer before we begin, I am currently holding Zip shares. Otherwise, let's jump into it. Okay, so for today's agenda, we're gonna be breaking down this video into growth, loss, regulation, bad debts, and my thoughts on the future of Zip slash whether or not I'll be investing more money. Okay, so starting off here with their growth, their strengths, I wanna talk about their expansion into the US via their QuadPay platform. This has seen enormous success here. Revenue up 252%, transaction volume up 256%, and transactions up 239%. This is huge news for Zip and shows early signs of success and their effectiveness of the expansion into the US thus far. We can also see that their US customers are up 191% indicating the popularity of the platform. This is also further supported by the fact that Zip was the second most alternative credit app in the USA during the holiday season. At this stage, I'm not actually able to find any data on the amount of people defaulting on their loans, i.e. people not paying it back to Zip Pay. Uh, so I'm cautiously optimistic about their future in the US still at this stage. Moving along here to Zip's operations in Australia and New Zealand. Again, we're seeing some massive growth. Revenue up a whopping 40%, transaction volume up 56%, and transactions up 102%. This is also supported by just how many new customers at 39% and merchants they've gained over the period. In fact, they've actually had more customers join the platform in the first half of FY21 than any previous half. This is probably due to their new products and innovations, which includes Tap and Zip, uh, becoming a Visa principal issuer, and a trial cashback rewards program with customer engagement continuing to accelerate, driving increased revenue per customer cohort. They've also gained access to 10,000 new merchants, some of which include Harvey Norman and Breitling, to name a few. So overall, Zip was the number one downloaded Buy Now Pay Later app in Australia in December and January over that Christmas period, which I think is just huge. I also just want to briefly mention that their bad debts have remained relatively constant since 2019, so I don't think there's anything crazy to see here. So moving along here, I just want to briefly mention some of their latest innovations too. Uh, in addition to launching Tap and Zip, I thought this was super interesting. Zip is starting to expand globally faster than I actually initially expected, with minority investments in both the UAE, the United Arab Emirates, and Eastern Europe. So doesn't seem like they're messing around at all here. They're taking their global expansion very seriously. All right, so we've looked at their gains, we've looked at their innovations. Let's have a look at some of their losses. And whilst all this news and expansion is super exciting and promising, they are still operating at an insane loss. Whilst we can see that their revenue has grown massively, so have their losses. We can see that their statutory losses are more than $400 million now, up approximately 1,400% from about a year ago. Before you guys start freaking out, yes, this number is astronomically high, but it appears Zip has been using this money to fund their expansion. We can see that the acquisition of QuadPay cost them hundreds of millions of dollars, so whilst the loss is still pretty intense, it's actually not quite as bad as it initially seems. And I also wanna talk about here their improved loss performance, and the vast majority of their orders are coming from returning customers, and because of this, Zip expects the rate of bad debts to continue to fall over time, and this is likely due to the fact that they're better able to optimize their credit risk assessment and risk decision making over the long term. Now, moving along here to a very important topic, and that's regulation. If you guys have watched any of the previous Buy Now Pay Later videos, you would know one of the things that makes me super uneasy about the sector is regulation. In Australia, we've got some high regulatory standards, which can mostly be seen as a good thing, I think, but my concern is usually how this will impact companies like Zip or after 
Afterpay. Despite this, in Zip's most recent announcement, we can see that they're cooperating with regulators and abiding by their voluntary code, running credit checks on every customer since inception. As a result, they're only seeing one in 100 customers late in any month, in contrast up to one in six for credit card users that are paying interest and are behind with their debt. So these are pretty impressive figures. And I've got to say, I'm pretty happy with how they've been cooperating with the regulatory bodies and the likelihood of regulation encroaching on their revenue stream in Australia seems pretty unlikely at this stage. All right, so what are my thoughts and will I be buying more? Okay, so here's the situation. I'm pretty impressed by the revenue growth and pursuit of innovation, but will I be buying more is a whole other can of worms. At this stage, due to their lack of profitability and highly volatile market conditions surrounding the buy now pay later, it does not currently align with my degree of risk tolerance and I therefore won't be purchasing any more. I initially bought a decently sized package around the $7 mark and I'm happy to hold this long term, but to buy more would expose me to way too much concentration risk and actually hinder some of my diversification benefits. Now for those asking should I buy now, I would only buy it if I were a less conservative investor and geared more aggressively with much more of an emphasis on maximizing returns. Personally, I'm not sure if I'll be able to stomach the volatility over the medium long term. However, I wouldn't be surprised if I saw this stock reaching new highs relatively soon. In saying that, it could just as easily move in the opposite direction, so be really careful when investing here, guys. Anyway, guys, that's all I've got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate the support. If you've watched up until now, if you've learned anything new, consider chucking us a like and maybe subscribing. Really goes a long way. These videos take us ages just to pump out really motivates me to keep getting out the content. If there is a company you guys would want us to review, drop a comment below. And as well, I want to hear what you guys are doing with the stock. Are you holding it? Are you selling it? I'm always interested to get into conversation in the comment section below. Thank you so much again, guys. We'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.